yourself and your family in these untouched, unstaged scenes. You or a loved one of yours can easily be a signal 30. We are at the scene of a double signal 30. Two lives have been lost, wasted because of the senseless violation of a simple, easy to obey traffic regulation. A truck loaded with cattle is moving along an expressway. From a feeder road, a passenger car containing seven people five of them children, ignores a stop sign, moves onto the expressway into the path of the truck. This is the sickening result. The truck literally ran over the passenger car. Two people are dead, the driver of the truck and a child in the car. Two others are critically injured. The driver of the passenger car violated a stop sign where visibility in both directions was excellent. His own neglect and stupidity cost the life of his daughter and the life of a man who just happened to be in that place at that time. And here is the same area in which the twin fatality occurred. Only a few are paying attention to the red octagon which is the universal signal for stop. Even boys on their bikes pump blissfully across the highway with no thought as to the meaning of the stop sign. What prepares a state highway patrolman for his exacting job? First, a period of rigid training. There is work in the classroom that covers law, situation, and procedure. There is physical training to sharpen the already splendid condition of the candidate. Something more must be there even before training starts. A spirit of dedication to the job that must be done. The combination of dedication, physical condition, classroom proficiency, personality and adaptability all add up into an effective alert officer. These men will represent the state in its respect for law. After the exhaustive and sometimes exhausting training comes assignment and then the lessons that only experience can teach. The state highway patrolman has many duties that can be called routine. Among them, the spot checking of cars. This patrolman and his fellow officer are checking vehicles for safety factors. Lights, forms, stoplights, and windshield wipers. This spot checking often finds minor troubles that are not known to the driver, causing him to be more mindful of the basic safety factors built into his car. 
It is, at best, a routine check, but it has its purpose in promoting a better safety record. The sign that denotes the speed limit of this particular zone is conspicuous, and so is the disregard for the sign's warning. The truck is ignoring it, and the result of such futile carelessness teaches a grim and grisly lesson. Two trucks are approaching each other. One is laboring up a hill. The other is moving at least 20 miles per hour faster than the legal posted limit. A minor fender bender has occurred at the bottom of the hill. When the truck driver sees the minor crash, he hits his brakes. The fully loaded semi-trailer jackknifes into the path of the slow moving truck. This is the raging, furious result. Two men are dead because one of them was too smart to obey a speed limit warning. While one of the drivers burned to death in his cab, the other was blown through the floor of the cab of his truck by the force of the explosion that followed the initial impact. His body could not be removed until the fires had been extinguished and the wrecked trucks separated. You've seen the blackened body of a dead man in a horrible death, far from family and friends and even farther beyond help. And you see the beginning of a final ride as one of the drivers is carried away, a mass of charred flesh. Had the speeding truck driver observed the 45 mile per hour speed limit, there would have been a plus safety factor. There would have been no death. How many ifs dominate your driving habits? Meet the passenger, painfully, though not seriously injured. Now, meet the driver, bumped about considerably, but surprisingly helped. The driver of the car lost control of the vehicle. The car skidded 165 feet off the right side of the road, hit an embankment, went 27 more feet, rolled end over end for 108 feet, knocked down a fence, ran into a post on which several mailboxes were mounted. The crossbar is seen piercing the car as it narrowly missed the driver and the passenger on the way to the left rear door. One man injured painfully, the other scared stiff with only a hazy recollection of what happened. This is the result of driving carelessly with only casual attention given to the important mechanics of driving. A railroad crossing and a pickup truck are the basic ingredients here. When the freight train hit the panel truck, the gasoline in the truck exploded and turned it into a funeral pyre for an aging, hard of hearing farmer. In spite of warnings and education, the toll taken at rail crossings remains foolishly high. Probably the most needless among many unnecessary ways in which to meet death. It was a country road, and although no flasher system was in operation, visibility was good in both directions. The engineer of the train saw the truck approaching and sounded his whistle some 500 yards from the crossing. The elderly farmer who moved carelessly onto the tracks probably never saw, much less heard, impending death. Rail crossings, wherever they are, carry a responsibility to the driver of a car, the responsibility of extreme caution. So the sickened, stiffened, charred mass that once was a man is removed. Every accident has at its base a violation of a traffic rule. Reckless operation of an automobile opens up a multitude of driving sins. Here on a state route, whether by speed or other causes, the driver loses control of his car. The vehicle rolls over, throwing the driver out and pinning him under the wreckage. Death most certainly has resulted from all appearances. 20 men are careful in lifting the car bodily because it is feared that rolling the car over might aggravate the injuries of the victim, if indeed he is alive. 20 men hold the car up while others gently remove the body. But a guardian angel hovered close to the man. He was found to have only serious injuries. 
nothing big. He lived to tell about it. Did he boast of beating death? Well, perhaps we don't know. Maybe he lived to tell others of the folly of driving recklessly. Maybe he was spared so that he could tell others that traffic laws are effective weapons against death and injuries only when they are obeyed. There is trouble ahead, trouble that may or may not be a signal third. What will we find? A minor mishap? Or will we look upon the stark face of death? A 17-year-old boy driving a red convertible comes over a hill crest and rams into a red hardtop that came out of a side road. Here is the young man critically injured, and this is his car. And here is the ultimate big spender in this tragedy, a visitor from a neighboring state. He has only a few hours to live as he sustains multiple injuries, any one of which would have been fatal. And this is the passenger in the dead man's car, painfully hurt because the driver of the car disregarded a common, easy to observe law. He had moved from a side road onto a main highway with no regard for oncoming traffic. The three or four seconds he tried to save cost him his life for his failure to yield the right of way. He is sprawled on the ground, already showing the pallor the doomed assumed. Notice the care with which these torn victims are handled by the ambulance men and patrol. These men are using far more care in their work than the drivers of many cars show in their own driving habits. Under the green blanket is the driver of the convertible driver of the hardtop lies only a few hours away from death. Another victim of the careless disregard of laws that were made not to restrict drivers, but to protect them. The man and his wife were in the area to attend her mother's funeral the next day. Thus, 14 hours before that sad ceremony, her husband met his death. The end of a trip to a funeral was simple in this case. Another funeral. A young man speeds home after enjoying a rollicking steak part. He thunders down a dirt road and plunges through a dead end, through a farmer's fence, and into an area that had recently been cleared of trees. The car bounced along, sprung open the door, and threw the driver partially out of the car. With the man's body momentarily hanging outside, the car door hits a stump and forces the door against the driver's chest, crushing him between the door and the car's doorpost. Two ironies presented themselves in this case. One, the damage to the car was slight. A repair bill of $75 to $100 would have covered it easily. Second, the man and his wife were planning a party for the next day, a party observing his young son's birthday. Another fact that should be remembered in this careless, useless expenditure of life, the dead man knew the road well, knew it too well because here, Familiarity was the mother of carelessness. The officer who investigated the fatality had the sad task of telling the man's wife and children of the tragedy, a task that grows no easier with repetition. A high school football star speeds down a country road late at night. His love of speed cost him his life. There were no witnesses, but it seems obvious that the car went out of control, wrapped itself around a tree, instantly killing the boy. 
A speeding car, once it begins to go out of control, is impossible to bring back to even key. It took several hours for the car to be pried away from the tree so that the boy's body could be recovered. The lad may have been fast on the gridiron, but speed on the highway is at best a losing and deadly game, as the lad's family sorrowfully learned. Now comes the nauseating task of removing the shattered hulk of a life that had been lived so little. The finale to the tragedy comes as the lad is placed in the rubber sack, the last offering to the great god speed. What would your reaction be if you were one of the men lifting this boy to the stretcher? What would it do to improve your own driving habits? Death sometimes plays an overture of torture. Here again, a posted speed limit on a curb was ignored. The car went out of control and came to the set. And so the cries of the maimed are heard, cries of pain and fear. This woman wept, but cried even more the next day, for then her husband died of his injuries. Here she was being lifted to the stretch. Now, he's being lifted out of the car, laid on the stretcher, his life having but fleeting hours to run. He will be the victim of an unexpected curve, unexpected because of high speed. We're cruel, cold and harsh, you say? You shouldn't be made to see and hear this? How could we give a better lesson on carelessness? See for yourself how sordid and sickening impending death can be. And see for yourself the weapon in this case, the steering car. Now and then when death throws the dice, a motorist is lucky. But the odds are fixed against you. The stake is your life. A hardtop convertible wheels down a country road. An oncoming car forces the hardtop to the side where it hits a steel bridge abutment. The car flips over and over and rolls the length of the structure and ends like this. The car was literally shoveled to the junkyard. The driver said he was only going about 40 miles an hour. But despite that assertion, here again was the result of high speed. The belief that speed limit warnings are for other people. The driver, oh yes, miraculously, he was unhurt. His injuries were limited to a few scratches. He crawled out of this tangled mess of metal. How could it be? A truck trailer outfit is loaded with 40,000 pounds of steel pipe. The driver is on his way home, 2,000 miles away. There is a sharp curve. The heavy rig goes out of control and ends in a creek. The young driver is crushed to death in an instant by the shifting steel. The accident happened at about 1.30 in the morning, and it was 5.30 before the body could be removed. Much of the steel had to be removed first before wrecking equipment could be brought into operation. Adding to the tragedy was the fact that the young man was on his first trip for a new company on a brand new job, his first over-the-road experience alone. Was he sleepy? Was he going too fast for safety? What factor came in here to cause death? 
But whatever it was, it was swift and it was final. If it was speed, the warning is clear. If it was drowsiness, it still is a lesson because driving is a full-time job requiring 100% of the driver's faculties. The morning sun lights the last act of the tragedy. The young man is on his way home. What's the score here? Not a single or double. Here's a triple signal third. Two congenial friends are in one car, breezing merrily down the road. Approaching them is another driver, alone in his car, using the right side of the highway. Now, the two men apparently dislike their legal portion of the road. They move to the left. This is what happened. Three people are dead. Here, the oldest traffic law in history has been broken. Keep to the right. Now, the men who died in this one were no different than you or I, really. So, imagine yourself in this position. Believe me, it could happen to you. What is the price to be paid for failure to yield right of way, or violating a stop sign? Well, it thought it could result in fine, and just maybe you can get away. Well, here's a big price that was paid. Four women met death because the driver of one of the cars failed to stop at the stop sign and failed to yield right of way. In addition to the four fatalities, three are seriously injured, two of them children. The cries and moans of the maimed are a grim accompaniment to tragedy. The woman whose cries you hear died a few hours later. She was the mother of the driver of the car. The car's driver was found to have had a long record as a traffic violator. Has the accident given her sleepless nights and regret? The fact remains that her callous defiance of law led to the death of four people. So this is the price that can be paid for violating a simple traffic law. Are you willing to pay it? Can you afford it? Think again, friend. Think again. Do you, as a driver, wish to assume the responsibility of creating a hardship by destroying the life of the head of a family? Would your conscience ever rest? What is the impact on a family whose husband and father met death? Let's watch and listen. Ma'am, if you recall, last fall I had the unpleasant task of informing you that your husband had been killed in an automobile accident. That is one of the many unpleasant tasks that we police officers have. Today I would like to get some sort of a message from you to pass on to the motoring public. As you know, there are many thousands killed in accidents each year. What type of uh, work did your husband do? He was a lineman for the High Edison Company. He worked with high voltage. He had a very dangerous job. He was careful with his job. Was he a careful driver? Well, he was a fast driver. He was usually 
reasonably careful, but he did drive fast, more so when he was alone than he did when the, the children and I were with him. Did you ever have to correct his driving? Yes, I asked him to slow down quite frequently. And how has this accident uh, affected your life and your families? Well, it means that uh, I'll have to go to work very shortly, provide for uh, the children's education, all their needs, whereas they would have had a father to help with that. The letter E is an important item in highway safety. It stands for education, enforcement, and engineering. Our highways are engineered for safety and convenience. Enforcement officers are trained and alerted to help traffic flow smoothly and safely. And that leaves the third E, education. And that one involves all of us. If we educate ourselves to our dangers and our responsibilities, we can expect accident-free highways. We can obey the law. We can use courtesy and consideration. Let's all of us regard the automobile as a useful servant and priceless necessity, not as a weapon to maim and kill. How do you want to die in traffic? How do you want to kill a loved one of yours? Well, we could show you more to give you a wider selection. All of these resulted from violations of simple traffic regulations. It's up to you and your own driving habits. We don't like to take these pictures, but whether we show you or your loved ones in the ugly sprawl of death is largely up to you. You can be, if you wish, just another Signal 30.